If you want to write a grand proposal that always wins, here are the steps you need to follow. Step number one, you want to write a strong cover letter. See, the cover letter is really important. This is the perfect opportunity to capture the founder's attention and get your foot in the door. Unlike the rest of your grant application, the, the letter can be less formal and address the reader more directly. And when you think about a strong cover letter, think about conciseness. Be very brief. The key goal here is what? You want your cover letter to compel the reader to get to your proposal because they're just writing the, the, the cover letter. They're not even looking at your proposal yet. You want to drive them to your proposal. Okay, so they have likely received tens or even hundreds of grant applications and your letter should separate you from the crowd as much as possible. We are speaking about differentiating yourself, boss. It's very important. Okay, so here are some of do's and don'ts when it comes to cover letters. Do's. Keep it short. Three to four paragraphs maximum. Get to the point quickly and state your intentions right away without too much fluff, okay? Don't waste time on trying to really uh, bring back some unnecessary stats. Nobody needs that. Nobody raise them anyway. Say what you need. At the very beginning, you want to mention how much money you need and what for. Be very clear. Don't be afraid to be direct. You deserve this grant, so make sure the reader knows it. And avoid repeating yourself. That's why I'm just I'm, I was just telling you earlier. Brevity is important. Conciseness is important. This is not the place to just recap what you said in the proposal. Feel free to go a little off course and provide something of value. And based on our experience, it's also really great if you contextualize the grant. In other words, you add, you actually explain why you need that grant at this very moment, and make a connection. Show that you understand the funder and draw a straight line from their mission and funds to your proposed project. It's very important to establish that connection, to establish that uh, alignment in objectives. Your, your objectives should align with the funder's objectives. Very important. So this is for all the do's. What about the don'ts? Don't get emotional. You should not write a heartfelt story about your mission or organization. You should not convey your message like, you know, you know, yeah, you know, please get back to us because kids are dying and whatnot. No, no, no. Convey your message in a less formal manner, but stay focused on your arguments. Okay. Do not mention your competition. No need to compare yourself with others. Just state your own desired outcome and try to make a good first impression without mentioning anyone else. Okay. It's all about you, not anybody else, just about you. So no fluff and right to the point. Number two, you want to start with a short executive summary. By the way, boss, welcome back to the channel. We're having a, a wonderful conversation to you with you today about how to write a grand proposal that always wins. So step number two, you want to start with a short executive summary. So moving on to grant writing, every winning grant needs to start with a brief executive summary and also known as a proposal summary. An executive summary is essentially a brief synopsis of the entire proposal. In other words, you are summarizing the entire proposal. It basically introduces your business, market segments, proposal, project goals, and so on and so forth. Essentially, your grant request, but let's say on one page, your grant request, read short, okay? And uh, it should have sufficient detail in terms of uh, what you want and also specifics. So you want to get to the point quickly and be pragmatic and factual. You know, getting to the point quickly is really important because your funders, your funder, your founder's attention span is very limited. He or she has to read through uh, hundreds or tens of uh, grant proposals every every single day. So you want to get to the point real quick. So here are the do's and don'ts. Do you want to keep it up to two pages long maximum? You need to provide just enough information that the grantee can. Uh, the grantee is the is the the grant maker. Okay, that the grantee can read only. Uh, this part and get a solid idea of what you are and what you need to, the money for okay so this is really important now one thing i want to say here is that one thing i want to say here is that uh, you want to include the resources it's very important so the funder needs to make sure that you are you have enough resource yourself or at least something mention the funds that you are requesting and uh, briefly explain your approach when it comes to spending them very important it's all about use of uh, grant proceeds you want to introduce your organization although you will go into detail about this later don't be afraid to tell the, the grantor the uh the funder about your history mission and, uh, and objectives okay very very important so those are the do's what about the don'ts do not address the funder directly 
The only place to do this is the cover letter. Now that you have started writing a grant application, things get need things need to get a more a little more formal here. Don't give out too much. Don't go too deep into detail in terms of the project description. You will have space for this later on. So it's very important. So here are a few questions I want you to really think of when thinking about writing an, a short executive summary. What is the mission? What is your mission in history? What do you do? What is your project's name and who is supposed to help? What problems are you solving and why it should matter? What is your end goal and how will it measure whether you achieved it or not? Why should you get the funds? What are your comp your competencies, your skill set? How much money do you need? And how do you plan to finance the project in the future? Do you have other funding sources? Very important. Step number three, boss. I want you to introduce your organization. By the way, I want to quickly uh, tell you about today's topic. We are speaking about how to write a compelling grant proposal, a grant proposal that always wins. So you want step number three, you want to introduce your organization. Now that you have set the stage for the entire proposal, you can start with your business or organization, share as much relevant information about your organization as you can. It can be about your infrastructure, your history, your mission, your experience. Here you also include a biography of key staff, your business track record, your success stories, your company goals and philosophy. Essentially, you want to highlight your expertise. Why should a funder choose you and not somebody else? Okay. And client recommendations, letters of thanks, feedback from customers and the general public are must have things to write in a grant proposal. Also include all valid industry certifications you know, ISO or quality certifications, licenses, and, and business and uh, indemnity insurance details. So this is really, really important. So now you need to know one thing. You need to show that your company or organization has the capacity and the ability to meet all deliverables from both an ex execution perspective, but also meet all legal, safety, and quality obligations, okay? QC is really important. Quality control is really important, especially if you have a... Uh, if you are talking to a funder that is technically inclined, they will want to they want to check those things. You may need to provide solvency statements to prove that you can meet your financial commitments to your staff and contractors. In other words, you can pay them. Okay. So here are the do's and don'ts. Do be objective. It's very easy to start patting yourself on the back a little too much and trying to convince the grant reviewers that you are the best of the best. Don't do that. Try to avoid this trap and stay factual. Factual, just facts. Provide a backstory. So when was the company or, or organization started and when and why? You want to what you want to do is you want to try to connect your mission to that of the grant maker as naturally as possible. Here are the don'ts. Don't go into too much detail. You don't need to list all of your employees by name, provide biographies of key staff like the executive director, and just mention your total number of employees. And uh, you want to don't stray from the points. This entire section should be formulated to make the points that you are the best organization to get the funding, not anyone else. Don't get too descriptive and forget about this fact. Okay, very important. Number four, I want you to write a direct problem statement. This is important. Boss, one of the most important uh, parts of the grant proposal structure is the problem statement also known as the needs statements or a statement of need. This is the place where you, you explain why your community has a problem and how you can provide the solution. Not, not anybody else, you can provide the solution. You may need to do extensive research on the history of the underlying problem, previous solutions that were implemented and potentially failed, and explain why your solution will make a difference. Again, it's all about your solution. Okay, And in a winning grant proposal, the problem statement will heavily rely on quantitative data and clearly display how your organization answers a need. So here are the do's and don'ts when it comes to writing a direct problem statement. Do. Use comparable data. Rely on the uh, results of other communities that already implemented your solution and got satisfactory outcomes. And you want you want to highlight urgency. So you want to you want to underline that it's very essential. It is quite essential that this project is started now instead of later. Now, the emphasis is on now. 
and you want to focus on the main problem. Try not to get sidetracked by other phenomena that are contributing to the key problem you are addressing. Focus on the core problem, on the, uh, the quintessential problem. What about the don'ts? What about the don'ts? Do not make it about you. It's not your, your organization that needs the grant funding. It is the community. Okay, and use don't use circular reasoning. Don't formulate the problem as the city doesn't have a youth center. We can build a youth center. So why? The, no, no, no. You don't do. This is called circular reasoning. Why does the city need a youth center in the first place? That should be the toughest, the toughest the arguments you want to uh, offer. The strongest argument that you need to offer your uh, funder. This is really important. Okay, that should be the thoughts behind your writing process. This is really, really important. And do not, again, you want to stay on point and think about what kind of solutions you offer and think about why only you, only you can actually uh, serve or, or can solve the problem. Not only you, but you at this particular point in time. Okay, this is important. So think about that when you write your direct problem statement. Let's talk now about stating your goals and objectives. Boss, this is really important. By the way, I want to quickly remind all our viewers that uh, in today's, uh, today's topic is very simple. We're teaching you how to write a grand proposal that always wins. A compelling grand proposal. And what you want to do here is you want to state your uh, goals and objectives. Okay. Another important part of the grand proposal process is clearly stating your goals and objectives. In fact, a lot of proposals fail because they forget or mishandle this step, so all of their hard work goes to waste. Okay, Write details about the desired outcome and how success will be measured. Very important because if the, the, grander, if the funder wants to audit your organization or your initiative, they will want to see something quantitative. So this section is key to providing information on the benefits of the, that the grantee, the, the, the grantee, the community, the government, or client will see for their investment. Okay, and although they sound similar, goals and objectives should be separated. Think of goals as broad statements and objectives as more specific statements of intention with measurable outcomes and a time frame. So here are the do's and don'ts that you need to follow here. Do state objectives and outcomes. An objective is something you want to achieve, not do. Make your objectives smart. You can really, you can really track your progress if your objectives are not smart. And by smart, I mean specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and time bound. And uh, you want to connect goals and objectives to the audience. So the final result of your project should always be the betterment of your community, expressed in a measurable way. Boss, this is very important. We want to quantify things here, okay? In a measurable way. What about the don'ts? Do not be too ambitious. Make sure your goals are attainable and don't get too ahead of yourself, okay? And uh, do not miss the goals for processes. Goals are always stated as results and measurable outcomes with the, de with the deadline, not as processes, okay? This is really important. So whenever you write a goal versus a process, make sure that the, the goals should be, uh, should be really uh, quantitative, it should be time-bound, it should be smart, as I said before, okay? And a process doesn't have to be. So again, you got to state your uh, goals and objectives and make sure they are clear enough to yourself, to your own organization, but also relevant what, to what the funder wants to see. I want to talk to you now about project design. So this is something that really is important. So project design, we are speaking about methods and strategies, okay? Now that the funding agency or grantee knows your goals, it is time to tell them how you plan on achieving them. See, the whole thing is you can talk about all that you can, you know, you you have a great proposal and whatnot, but it's um, execution is quite essential because are you just an, org an, uh, an organization that just talks, talks and talks, but they can't walk Okay, so if you have to really uh, talk, it's about time that you explain in detail. See, granularity is important here. You want to explain in detail how you're going to achieve what you just wrote. List the new hires and skills, additional facilities, transport, and support services you need to deliver the project and achieve the defined measures for success. Good project management and good project management discipline and methodologies with the detailed requirements specified in an individual task articulated, uh, articulated will keep a good focus on task, deliverable, and results. The whole point is what? 
you want to be specific that's all it is you got to be specific you can't just write just to write but you got to be specific you got to be uh, specific and quantify things as possible quantity quantify things okay here are the do's and don'ts you want here are the do's connect to the objectives so your methods and strategies absolutely need to be connected to the objectives you outlined as well as the needs statement you want to provide examples boss is very important if you have a constellation of examples you want to uh, find examples of when this same methods worked for previous projects and you want to demonstrate you want to demonstrate affordability so cost effectiveness is really important so make sure that the grant maker realizes that your methods are rational well researched and affordable cost effective here are the don't the, the don'ts do not assume things don't approach the topics like the reader is well versed in the field be specific and introduce your uh, methodologies as though you were talking to someone who knows nothing about your organization or propositions okay it's always important to articulate your uh, your uh, your initiatives really well and don't forget about your audience you need to demonstrate that the particular strategies you choose make sense for the community because you're doing everything for the community you're gonna you get in the, the grant you're getting the grant money for the community not for yourself not for your organization so make sure that you actually can can articulate you can convey to the to the funder that you understand the needs and wants of your community let's talk now about the evaluation section so you need to track success right so this section covers project process evaluation how will you how will you track your programs program your program uh, programs progress yeah programs progress <laughs> it also includes so basically how will you track progress okay it also includes the time frame needed for evaluation and who will do the evaluation including the specific skills and products needed and the cost of the evaluation phase of the project this is really important so this is in our view in our research for the last 30 years it's one of the most important steps to writing a grant proposal as all funders will look for evaluations okay whether you we're talking about government agencies or private foundations they all need to know if the program they invested in made a difference so evaluation can be quite expensive and need to have entry and exit criteria and specifically focused on uh, in scope activities and uh, all of uh, all out of scope evaluation activities need to be specified as this phase can easily blow out budget wise okay so once again you want to have solid management in terms of uh, your project management so you can have discipline and, and the right routines to make sure that you focus on what's really important here are the do's and don'ts here you want here are the do's first you want to obtain feedback so however you imagine your evaluation process it needs to include some sort of feedback from the community taking part in the project and you want to decide between internal and external evaluation one of the most important variables here is whether you will be doing the evaluation with your staff or hire an external agency to do it independently and if you do what are what, what is the cost implication there you got to think about that too what about the don'ts do not be vague you need to clearly outline the measurement methods that will tell both you and your funders how the program is doing no room for vagueness here and do not neglect time frames it's not just about measuring success it's about measuring success across time so we're speaking about quarter to quarter quarter over uh, let's say one year month over month so it's really over time across time so make sure your evaluation strategies are periodic very important so the the bottom line is what the the funder is really investing their time and energy and money in your project make sure that they have the, the appropriate tools to know if this is working or not Let's talk about other funding sources and sustainability. This is really important. Now, your funders won't like the idea of investing in a short-term project that has no perspective. They'll be much more willing to recognize a long-term winner and reward a promising project that can run on a larger scale. It's all about, sometimes it's all about scalability, okay? That's why you need to show how much you can make this happen and how willing you are to make it happen. It's all about sustainability. So this section of your grant proposal is for funding requirements that go beyond the project total cost of ownership including ongoing maintenance daily business and operational support okay and this may require you to articulate 
the projected ongoing cost, if any, for at least five years. And we have seen in our experience those winning project, those projects that win, go all the way to ten years. Okay, an accurate cost model needs to include all factors, including inflation, specialist skills, ongoing training, potential future growth, and decommissioning expenses when the project or the product reaches the end of its life cycle. So here are the pros and cons we have to think about when you think about this uh, section. So here are the do's. Have a strong blueprint. So most grant reviewers will know. Next, you want to think about other funding sources and sustainability. This is very important. Now, your funders will not like the idea of investing in a short-term project that has no perspective, right? So it's got to be sustainable. They'll be much more willing to recognize a long-term winner and reward a promising project that can run on a larger scale. It's all about scalability. That's why you need to show how you can make this happen, and you gotta make it. You gotta make it happen. This section of your grant proposal is for funding requirements that go beyond the project, total cost of ownership, including ongoing maintenance, daily business, and operational support. This this actually may require you to articulate the projected cost here in terms of uh, let's say the last. Uh, let's say the last the next five years the next 10 years okay and an accurate cost model needs to include all factors including inflation specialist skills ongoing training potential future growth and de decommissioning expenses when the project or the project or the, or the product rather reaches the end of its life cycle it's really important you got to think about a entry and exit here are the do's and don'ts do's have a strong blueprint most grant reviewers will know a thing or two about business plans, so you need to show a viable blueprints for sustainability. Okay, we're speaking here about five years, three years, five years, ten years, okay? Exactly how will you generate revenue and keep the project going? And you want to mention other funding too. If you plan to get more government funding, this is the place to mention it. Don't think that this is not a good uh, long-term strategy. It is good because the... the the reviewer wants to make sure that you are thinking about not putting all your eggs in the same basket. You are trying to diversify your sources of funding. So this is really good. What about the don'ts here? Actually, there's one. Do not leave anything out. Don't leave space for speculation or filling in the blanks. Everything needs to be outlined and you need to show without a doubt that your program can run even after the initial resources are gone. It's all about sustainability. Okay, It's all about generating revenue. It's all about cash inflows and cash outflows. And you have to show that the project on itself, by itself, can be sustainable monetarily speaking. In other words, the cash inflows will be way above the cash outflow so that the project can actually sustain itself. This is very important. So this is what you have to put in the other's funding sources and sustainability. The next thing I want you to do is to outline a project budget. Okay, of course, one of the most important grant proposal topics is budgeting. Okay, this is the moment when you go into detail about exactly how you will be using the resources from an operational standpoint. We're speaking here about granularity. You got to go granular, go as deep as possible. You want to provide full justification for all expenses, including a table of services or a service catalog and product offered can be used to clearly and accurately specify the services. Remember that the project budget section is the true meat of your grant proposal. Overcharging or having a high quote can lose you the grant and even be seen as profiteering. Under quoting might win you the business, but you may not be able to deliver on your proposal, which you, which could really adversely impact your standing with the with the funding with the funder. Many grant many grant towards under quote in the hope of uh, hooking in the radar and then looking for additional funding at a later stage. This is a dangerous game to play and could affect your individual or company's brain, community standing, or industry reputation. Remember, what goes around comes around. People talk in this industry, so don't do this, okay? So here are the do's and don'ts. Do's. Pay attention to detail. It's all about granularity. I said this before. Everything, and, and we mean everything, needs to be covered. Travel cost, supplies, advertising, personnel, don't leave anything out. Double check. It can be easy to leave out a zero or move a decimal point or distort everything by accident. So be thorough. You want to run off your numbers. This is just for the reader, for the reader's sake. A lot of decimal points and uneven numbers will be harder to track. Okay. And uh, what about the don'ts? Well, 
Do not do it alone, especially if you're not that good with numbers. Do not hesitate to include other people and assemble a team to tackle this task together. And don't forget about indirect costs. A lot of grant writers will leave out indirect costs like insurance, utilities, trash pickup, etc. But this can actually st stack up, so be careful not to forget them. And this is really important because in the long run, you're actually, you know, if you have a, a good a good project, and this project is running over, over let's say, uh, 6 months, 12, 12 months, 24 months, 36 months, or 60 months, you're talking about having a sustainable, you know, you want to have a sustainable structure, a foundation that will make sure, I mean, and that foundation will make sure that your project is sustainable, but also budget-wise, okay, cash inflows versus cash outflows. So before I close to this conversation, for those of you who have no idea what I just spoke about, what is a grant proposal really? In short, it is a request for an investment in a nonprofit or a for-profit project. At first glance, grant proposals bear benefits only to the organization or individual entrepreneur who needs the money, but that's not exactly true. And so for grantees, a grantee is an individual or organization giving you the money. It's not an investment in some random project, but an investment in positive change. Thus, they can have a huge impact on issues that concern a company's morals, values, or culture. Okay, so you really want to be very careful there. And before you start, you need to pre you need to prepare. If you're talking about how to write a grant proposal for a nonprofit organization, this document should be only a small part of your fundraising plan. First, you need to define your fundraising goals estimate the cost, develop the timeline of your project, and find prospective grants. Almost the same applies to the process of how to grant, how to write a grant proposal for a small business. And so in, in the United States, for example, the new business should register in a federal grant program before they can ask, they can actually ask for a grant. It makes sense to submit a short grant letter before writing your full grant proposal to save you time. So if your if your grantee approves your letter and sends you a request for a formal grant proposal, you can proceed with writing a detailed RFP or RFP response to this prospective investor. Okay, and to save and the reason why I'm saying this is because it takes a lot of time to write a grant proposal. This is not something you can just write like uh, in one day or one week. It takes time, and uh, we know entire teams that write grant proposals all day long actually for organizations okay so to save even more time you can use um, actually a document management software tool to assist you in this difficult test so there are actually uh, some tools some software tools that can help you with that so besides grant proposals those tools can handle your quotes agreements contracts and proposals okay so this is really something you need to think about now one thing i want to say in general is that you can also write a grant proposal for yourself as a person as an individual so a grant a grant proposal is not just for an organization a non-profit organization or a for-profit company individuals also within some within in some cases can actually apply for grants and actually be approved thank you so much for your attention i really appreciate it i was just talking to you today about how to write a grant proposal that always wins so write a strong cover letter, start with a short executive summary, introduce your, your organization, write a direct problem statement, state your goals and objectives, think about the project design methods and strategies, the evaluation section, track and success, other funding sources and sustainability, outline a project budget. Thank you so much. I'll see you next time. But until then, remember, stay marvelous.